Have you ever thought about what causes motion for someone or for something? Think about it. What, what really forces someone or something to move forward? In high school, I had to take physics class. Uh, in physics, motion is always talked about. Motion is the key topic that the teacher teaches about because physics studies both matter and motion and how it relates to time and how it relates to space. And so one assignment, our teacher assigned that we had to build a model rocket just like this. And what we had to do is not only build it, but we also had to identify what were the forces behind this rocket. And we had to calculate, what about the thrust? We had to calculate the lift. We had to calculate the drag. And we also had to calculate just the length of how high this was gonna go. So after much time and much hours of research and understanding the laws of motion, I finally built this wonderful and successful rocket. And so after I turned it in, our teacher allowed us all to launch our rockets just to test, just to see what rocket would actually make it off the launch pad. So mine went up and sure enough, it blasted off and moved perfectly and just very forcefully up into the sky. And I was extremely excited. However, some of my classmates had some failures to launch and their rocket exploded on the launch pad. But what I learned about this assignment and from this assignment was that there was a lot of steps involved in order to succeed, that I had to piece together, that I had to calculate, I had to identify what were those forces that were gonna drive this thing to really create a forward motion. Do you know how many Apollo missions it took to actually arrive to the moon? 11. Not one, not five, but actually 11 missions to finally arrive, to finally arrive at this amazing goal that NASA set. And that when actually Neil Armstrong, the astronaut that landed onto the moon, he had this amazing quote that said, that's one small step for man and one giant leap for mankind. Basically saying for this small period here in history, in July of 1969, that man finally succeeded, that man finally reached its goal, and that for the entire of human history, this has been the goal, to actually get out into outer space and to finally land. And it took them 11 missions. So how does this relate to our faith? Why are we even talking about it? How does this even connect with our relationship with God? Well, there's this idea that if you make this large enough leap, then you'll have this amazing growing faith, which is totally false. And some think that when you follow Jesus, you have to make this huge leap in order to get the relationship right. This is completely not right. Leaps are not necessary. Steps are very necessary. See, God, God is not expecting us to make leaps. He's just expecting us. He's expecting us to desire so he can move us forward, so we can just take one motion towards him. We're gonna be looking into the scriptures today in the Gospels, Matthew chapter 14, verses 27 all the way to 31. And we're gonna see this exchange between Jesus and Peter as Jesus is walking on the boat. So please join me. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got down and stepped out of the boat and walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, when he saw the waves, he was afraid and be he began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. So let's kind of unpack this very slowly because Peter really has three movements happening here when he gets off the boat. The first one is, is that Jesus is right there walking on water and he's kind of looking like a ghost figure. So the disciples are immediately scared. So Peter yells out, Lord, Lord, is that, is that you? If so, call me out. So he calls him out. So Peter makes this amazing, huge, big step and walks out. So Peter takes one step forward and then he keeps walking. He's trusting in Jesus. And then all of a sudden he sees the wind. And then he sees the waves. He starts to see the riptide come over. 
he gets a little scared. And then that's right where Peter stops trusting and starts sinking into the water. So unfortunately, we have Peter who made this amazing one step forward, and now he stopped trusting, and he stopped trusting, and he started sinking right down to the water. And he said, and he yelled, Lord, Lord, please help me. So here we have Peter. He made one step forward. He got afraid. He got scared when he saw the wind and the waves, and he took one step back. And then as he was sinking, he cried out and started to retrust Jesus again by saying, Lord, save me. So here we have, we have Peter one step forward, one step back, and then another great step forward. See, if you look all throughout the New Testament, in particular the Gospels, you'll see that Peter does this pretty frequently. Trust Jesus, be extremely loyal to Jesus, and then guess what? Not trust Jesus again. He goes back and forth, back and forth. But to me, this is a true mark of discipleship because it's messy. It's going to be up and down, up and down, forward, backwards. But God just is caring just about motion, just about motion, because God is working at getting where he wants you to be one step at a time. See, I can really relate to Peter. I don't know about you because I can just see the humanness in Peter. And here he is. He's actually with Jesus. He's been hanging out with Jesus. He's been praying with Jesus. He's been doing ministry with Jesus. And Peter still makes some steps back. To me, that's so affirming and encouraging because here we actually have a disciple here messing up every once in a while. So that gives us hope. So when we're really trying to have some forward motion and trying to grow our relationship with God, that we can identify and relate with Peter. When John F. Kennedy and NASA, when they're planning to get to the moon, they knew it was going to take multiple attempts. And obviously it took 11 attempts. It took 11 attempts to get to the moon. And so they weren't upset. They weren't displeased. They weren't frustrated. Yes, of course, there was some backward motion and there was probably some doubt and some conspiracy happening, but they kept their mind on the mission because they knew it was all just about steps. And see, Jesus is calling us to lay our life down. He's saying to sacrifice and for us to leave sin because he knows it's going to be a journey. And Paul talks about that we need to co-labor with God, that Jesus is inviting us into a relationship with him to restore this world. So it's going to be back and forth. And Jesus knows that it's going to take some time. He knows that we're not going to get it right away. He knows that, you know, we're going to mess up and we're going to have our failures and we're going to have our failures to launch and move back and move forward. See, Jesus isn't wanting perfection. He wasn't wanting us just to get it right here now. Rather, he's wanting connection. And how you establish that connection, how you get that relationship, is by just taking these just small, itty-bitty steps towards him. See, it's not about quick fixes. It isn't about immediate results. It's just about taking simple, simple steps. And see, once we understand this and we start to live and grow in our relationship with God step by step, life transformation is going to be happening. Do you think when Apollo 11 got in the launch pad, you know, the astronauts and NASA and the president were thinking that this was going to possibly go to the moon? Do you think they knew what was next? I'm assuming that they were probably pretty frustrated because they just had 10 failed missions. And they didn't know what was going to happen when this thing hit five, four, three, two, one, blast off. They didn't know. So I'm going to ask you, what's your next step in your relationship with God? Five, four, three, two, one.